sorts of fun doors. So where are you talking today about knobs? Hello, my name is John. Skippy Limkul. Welcome. Hey, there's no live stream this Saturday. So instead, I wanted to give you guys a treat of a tutorial on Unify with a topic I have said many times. I need to make a video on that. I want to show you how knobs work and I'm finally doing it. Um, real quickly, this video is sponsored by my website, pluginguru.com and I know relief is spelled wrong. Sorry, I will fix it. <laughs> Come to pluginguru.com if you need inspiring patches. Um, I'm, I, we've got all sorts of stuff to cover with the knobs. We're going to start with the basics. Basically, here's the concept. So there are four pages of eight knobs. And as you see, there's a CC number assigned by default to the first eight when you install Unify. And you can right click on these and you can unassign if you want. And then they don't listen to MIDI CC. And then it's only automation in your, your sequence or your DAW. Uh, or you can go to any of these and right click and say, I want it to be assigned to whatever MIDI CC you want or MIDI learn and then move a control. And that will make it so it can move. Now these knobs can be assigned to an unlimited number of these parameters that you see inside of any of these plugins, whether it's plugins that come with Unify or else if it's a third party plugin, Serum, whatever. We'll, we'll look at that in a little bit to show you how that works. But by clicking the little bullet by each dot, you have the ability to open what's called linked parameters. And this is how you set up parameters to this knob to change different. <laughs> So up here at the top, there is the plus button, which is how you add a new assignment. And then these five buttons are really important because they tell Unify what type of graph to make. If it's at the very top corner or the bottom, that's min or max. But if you see it in the middle, that means it's the current value. So you can say max. So, so this one is zero to the current value. This is zero to max. This is current value to zero. This is max to current value, and this is current value to current value. So by using these, you can have it make the graph. It's really, really handy if you're going to something really complex. Let's say something like BPM, like value of Nubius is like five different layers. If I wanted to go over here to a knob and I could say link parameters, and let's say I want it to be current value and I want it to be zero at the minimum value. So I could go to each one of these and say mix level and it will choose and pick the current value of what each one of these are and make it that value for this knob throw for each one of these. This is what's so wonderful with this is you can go like this and by doing this, I have set up all of these layers so that when it's at zero, it's zero. And when I bring it all the way up, this is the volume it was when you call it up. As I bring this down, it's bringing everybody down the same amount. Now, I could change that if I wanted to have the pad be up louder while everybody else is fading out, it will now do it. 
Like it hasn't even moved the volumes of the two pad parts. Now it starts to. So you have the ability with these controls to like grab the entire mix of a complex setup and assign it all to one knob to master control the volume of it. Uh, so many ways to use these. Which is really cool. This library just came out. It's an incredible library of samples from my Access Virus. Uh, recorded in the Redwoods. There's pictures attached to all of these. So it's fun stuff. Uh, so, knobs allow you to change parameters to any of the plugins that you see here on the screen that are here. For example, say that I wanted to Maybe take this and I wanted it to be so that this is dark and I have this set. So it's kind of cool and chirpy, right? But it's that way only when the filter is down. So I can look at this knob that's at that's a filter cutoff, right? From here, I want to go to here. And while it does it, I want samples start to go in some so that it's going to go like that. So let's do this. Let's just say X, X to get rid of those. So there's no assignments right now whatsoever. And let's go over to plus instrument. Now on this layer, there are parameters that are first right here. These are sends, volumes and things. These are, you know, let's have this go away for a second so you can see what's going on. So as you can see, we've got the direct send which is the dry signal and then an auxiliary send because there are times where you want the dry to be zero and the sound is now 100% going through this reverb chain of, on the auxiliary bus. Or zero and just dry. And if you double click, it's zero dB. Right? So those are the first parameters that show up here in the list. But when it says plug-in, this refers to right here, the instrument. And um, whatever plugin is there, Guru Sampler is there. So this says Guru Sampler. If I had this set to Serum or Zebra or something else, it would say Zebra or something else. And as you'll see in a minute, we'll, we'll do this. It's a whole different set of parameters because each plugin has its own parameters. So if I go here and I look down the list right here in the middle, filter cutoff. So I want that. So I choose that. And now, as I bring this, this equals the knob position, so you can change, check this out before closing the window, which is nice. Right? And I also wanted the sample start to change. So let's go like this. And I want it also to be current value. I want, ah. Well, here, let's do it this way. Um, open up Guru Sampler and set the sample start to where I'm going to want it to be. When this is down, here you see it's kind of slow. Yeah, that's nice. So I go back to this knob, to the linked parameters, plus because it's a new assignment. I want to add something else to this list. Go to the instrument, go to sampler, and at the bottom of the list is sample start. And since I have it set at its value, that's the value I want when the filter is down. So I want to use this option. And as I choose this and go instrument, Guru Sampler, at the bottom of the list, it says Sample Start, there. So this way, when it's here at the beginning, I have my pad, the natural attack that's in the samples. As I bring this up, here, let's open up Guru Sampler so we can see this. If I go like this and have this minimize a little bit. As I move this knob now, the filter is going to come down in value while the Sample Start goes up. See him move? And it gets even cooler than that because inside of here you have a curve now that you can click on and you can change the curvature by doing this this means it's traveling more rapidly through the area that has the bigger arch so it's going to get darker faster 
And if I bring this down even farther and move this, you'll see it just jumped the filter cutoff even lower. So, or if I want it to be the other direction like this, now it's really slow and it doesn't start coming down until really late. So you can change the curvature of this throw between this value and that value. And if you want, if you don't like this value and you go, oh, I want to change this, you can change it. And if you have this all the way here and you change it, you can hear it in real time. This is actually a really unique thing that no other plugin that I know of does. You can hear the change in real time. We're sending the values in real time so I can pick it out. When this is lit green, if I want, I could double click right here and say 0 0.25 and it will set it to it because, and if I say z this and I want it to be like 0 0.1, then it's 0 0.1. So you can type in the values by first clicking one of the dots and then double clicking and saying 0 0.5, there. So you can have this doing so many things. I could say at the same time, I wanted to send up the auxiliary send, this knob right here, auxiliary one, so I want it as it goes through this minimum, and I'm just gonna click here and drag to, to make it go to where I want it to go. So now as it gets up, and let's say that we want the water verb to start really short. And I'm gonna go over here and say plus, and now I go to the auxiliary because they have these effects, if you go over here, instead of instrument, go to auxiliary bus, number one, there's up to four, go to effect, and it will list the effects. And these could be any plugins that you own. And when you select this, you'll see all the parameters of the plugin you own. And feedback is the parameter that makes reverb longer. So I'm going to say, see how it says current value to the minimum? I can click this little tiny button right here. This will invert the value. Because I want to start there and then take this and change it to be really long, like, like 97, 98. So as I bring this up, the reverb is longer now. I could open up water verb and put this right here. And as you can see now, it's changing that parameter too. So it's unlimited. You could have 30 different parameters here changing parameters in every plugin that Unify has access to. If you hit the plus button, we have access to the instrument, which is the green layer. We have access to the auxiliary bus, which is the blue layer. And we have access to the master. If you go to effects, you'll see there's flex EQ, enforcer, and loud mats. Let's go to flex EQ and let's have the peak gain increase. And I'm gonna invert by clicking the little invert. So it starts there and then I'm gonna make it even louder. Again, I can hear the change in real time. So now it's made the brighter reverb, everything has more presence to it. So you can assign anything to your heart's desire to change the sound in real time to a knob. And when you're done, you can double click and say, uh, Transform, X form. That's what I use quite often for this. And now, when I play with this patch and I'm playing it, that's pretty powerful because it gives you basically God control over every plugin you have loaded inside of Unify. So if I wanted to add something else to this, let's go over here. I have favorited a whole bunch of patches. So let's choose, this is a patch from the wave state. This is the... Right? But 
Instead of loading it that way, I'm going to go down here and I'm going to say load this as a unified layer and load it again. And then I can go up here and I can delete this layer and delete the auxiliary bus layer because this encapsulated plugin has the auxiliary bus and the master effects and the instrument all in it. So it's all there. And if I want, I could go to any of these and say initialize. And that will give you the initialized, no name, no assignments, anything like that, so that it's fresh. And then let's say I wanted to add like the JH Chill Sequence Chords, which is a nice patch from Hive. This is from... Now, if you're wondering how I'm getting these patches, we've unified like 80 plugins. And if you go to the Plugin Guru page for Unify, and you just click Unify, and then you scroll down the page, you will find this list of all the plugins that we've unified. And all of these, if you just click, you will download the factory patches of that plugin in Unify format. And just have that plugin, typically the VST2, unless it says VST3 format for here. Um, you have that plugin known inside of Unify under the known plugins, this little page right here. And if I went to Zebra, see right down here to the end where we have zebra zebra 2 vst right so that means i could go to the zebra library and turn off the heart because i don't have anything in here heart and i could go to bpm synth and say i'm still on unify layer let's add journey so now <laughs> got these two rhythmic patches and then the wave state patch and maybe I want to like control a filter over everything there's so many ways to do this if you want independent control um, you could go over here to the knobs and let's say uh, let's hive filter and then let's have this one here be zebra 2 filter and then now there's a shortcut. You can click here and say linked parameters. If you hold down option or alt on your PC and click this, it will also open that window. I like shortcuts to get around quick. And I'm going to say min, max. I want the full range. And this is knob number two. So this is for Hive. So if we go to the second patch, we go to the plugin unify. And now what we see is the knob assignments that are to that patch. If I was to go here to this patch and open it, it's using Hive, but each one of these has their own knob assignments that I have set up when we made the factory patch. So by assigning to that knob, there's that one. And then let's go to this one and link parameters. Go over here to number three, unify, filter cutoff. Now, maybe I want these to both be on the same knob. So it's changing the filter of both of those. I could just go over here and say, copy this assignment. Go over here to Hive Filter to the parameters. Go up to the plus, And because there's something in the clipboard, Unify knows that and say, paste. And there it is. So now, Right? It's that easy to use. You can assign this when you hit plus and you go to each of the instrument layers and go to unify. You see the parameters that I have assigned for that plugin. It doesn't tell you what plugin it was, so you need to know that and see the list here. Now, I use Pump House quite often in all of these layers. So let's go over here to this second one and let's say initialize because we ended up moving that to over here. This is Hive and Zebra filter. Let's have this be a big pump house fun. So pump house all. Oh, it's too, too many letters. Uh, I just 
Don't pass. So option alt click. I want it min max. I go over here to instrument one to unify. And I look to see if I have pump house. There it is. I always call it pump house and all of the layers for every library that's been unified. It's the same name. Layer two, unify pump house. Boom. Instrument number three, unify pump house. There it is. So it doesn't even have to be the same number in the order or anything like that. I can just, it, I'll find it in the list. So it was found in all three. So now, now maybe I don't want the piano one to be quite so much. I don't mind if it has a little bit, but I want it to still sound like a piano. So go link parameters. That's layer one. And it says right here the name, Piano in the Stars. So just take the max, click and bring it down. And you could actually bring this all the way to max so everybody else is max. And then listen, none, max. Say like there. There is so much power in these, it's not even funny. I mean, the things you can do because not only is it min and max, but it gets even deeper because you can actually double click and add extra bullets that can go anywhere. You could have it go up, be at maximum pump house right in this part, and then come back down to nothing for this part. So. Now the pads and stuff are normal, but the piano's pumping, right? I mean, okay. Other things that you can do that are really fun. Let's go to this knob and do something else. I want, there's a really cool ability inside of Unify to turn on and off a layer. And by clicking on these little green dots over here, you're doing it not like the mute button. The mute button immediately mutes it. What's fun with this is they're muted, but they're still sitting there waiting to play. Just click the dots so they're on, and the next time you play notes, they're playing. Let's bring down Pump House a little bit. And if I click these again, they're still playing until I play new notes. And that ability is called right here instrument each instrument has right here midi enable the value of 64 is where the breakpoint is here right where if you change this to toggle let's go replace you can change an assignment like say i've assigned this to midi enable i want to change it instead of deleting it click this little dot replace gives you access to the whole list again of all the layers piano instead of Enable, let's say toggle, and now you'll notice that it's only off. It's it's doing a funny thing because um, it's supposed to be on a switch that only has two values, zero and another value. So it could be one or it could be 127, but any value other than zero is going to make it pop on, right? So I don't want that. I want to use enable. It's just more clear that way. And I don't actually want it for layer one. So this is layer two. And so let's go layer two, replace, instrument two, MIDI enable. Now, I'm going to show you something really tricky and cool. So you could go here and you could say instrument and you could go here and choose MIDI enable that way. Another way to do it is to select here and say duplicate. The other thing that's crazy with our assignments here is you can type in here by double clicking and go right here and say three. And now I have assigned this to layer three. Just by changing the text in the assignment, you can type in complete assignments if you want to for every parameter. It's pretty nuts. So now I have it so that both are off. Well, wait, here, I need to turn the piano on because it's not supposed to be off. And here, let's go like uh, layer two and three enable. So oh, I should be capital E. So now they're off, now they're on. And 64 is the break point, right? 
Now, I'm gonna show you something kind of cool. Inside of this link parameter, we have two parameters here. I wanna make it so that I can switch between them in three possible states. Just one, just the other one, or both. So I'm gonna select one. Inside of this graph that you can click and drag, you can also right click. And we have the ability to save curve and load curve presets. And I've made a whole bunch of curve presets, including the step one of up to five. And these are perfectly calculated. So I can say step one of three. And I can say right here, right click, load curve for the second layer. And say this is two of three. So this way, I have one on when it's here, two on when it's here, and when I get to here, they're both off right now. But instead, I'm going to double click that off, and I'm going to say on, and I'm going to go up here to this top one that was off, and double click and bring it up. So now it has an area where it's down, but now I have an area where I can have one. See how it's playing layer two? Over here, three. And then when I bring this up to here, both. So you can get into capabilities where, because a unified layer can be a complete song setup, you could have a complete song with eight different layers if you needed to have it where one knob switched between different setups of the layers and it can be out of order it could be where this one here i want to add one more enable let's say for instrument one enable and i'm going to have it so that it's on all the time until it gets to the very end so there's a part of this where it's playing both the pads and this but if i want i could bring this to the max See how it's playing all three? And then when I come to here, it takes the piano out. So if I get it. And then I bring this down. I kind of want one more where there's none. So that means you would just go right here and say for layer uh, two, Right here, double click and double click one more. When it gets to this point right here, it's going to turn both of them off. Two and three is off. So when this is down here, it's just the pianos. Now, remember how I talked about each plugin? has access, Wave State Native is right here, and I have access if it opens up and shows you the whole interface of everything here. And you see that there's a bell sound right here, layer D. Well, if I wanted to, I could go to the knob assignments of this layer this is the, I've opened up this layer of these three layers, and I'm looking at the knobs of that layer. And I'm going to go over here to a page where I don't have an, I did a lot of assignments to the wave state, but right here, I'm going to say bells go away. <laughs> and let's go over here to the link parameters, and I want it to be the current value to zero. And then I can now go instrument and see how it says wave state native, and boom. Now I get all of the assignments of wave state native. Every parameter. It's crazy. So A, B, C, D. Here's D. Let's look at the top of the list. Uh, D, these are the timings. Let's see. Do they have like a volumes and stuff up here? A, B, C. So somewhere down here is going to start D. And D. Let's see if I can see where <laughs> it's just, oh, I, I think I saw it. D program volume there. So now there's the bells. I can make them go away. 
So now I want to add that to my master page here. So we say, bells go away. <laughs> and what I do is I click and I go to link parameters. Click this box for minimum to max value. Instrument 1. Unify. And you look down the list and there's that knob that I made and named. So when I select that, it has now brought that up to the top level of Unify. So... So I can have this nice pad sound. I can slowly bring in the bells. And then I'm turn this up so it turns on all of them. So the possibilities to go into Unify Layer add to the knobs and then link that knob to the top master layer is just crazy. This power is something you can't get anywhere else. You could set up a mix for a song where you're having it change like program changes basically and play it live while you're sequencing into your sequencer. So you don't have to go through and like do all the tedious turn down the volume automations on this layer and stuff. You could set it up ahead of time and interact and do it in real time. And it's so much more fun for me I th to, to play it in that way. It's just really, really cool to be able to do that. So those are some of the power moves in Unify for knobs. So I hope this video helped. I, I wanted to do this for a while. We keep adding new parameters and abilities to these knobs. So I've kind of waited until <laughs> well, we were at a point where you know, we're not going to be adding, we're adding one more parameter in the next update that will be out in May or early June at the latest probably. And that's to have a duplicate plus one layer. We are adding that, but otherwise they work exactly like they do now. So I hope this video is helpful and enjoy and we'll see you in another video. Okay. Bye.